nice. Winter days call for comfort food, wouldn't right? you say? Oh, yes. Nice hearty dishes with depth. And somebody that I know that's hearty and real deep and always <laughs> knows how to tell us everything about everything <laughs> is our science guru, our kitchen science guru, Mr. Dan Kohler. Yeah. Dan, today you were talking about raising meat. Yeah, it's winter. I thought, why not break down one of sort of the oldest techniques for dealing with tough cuts of meat? So what is braising exactly? Braising comes from a French word, braise, which actually means uh, live coals, which gives us a lot of idea of how this technique was originally used. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, we would have only had iron cauldrons, and you would have set that in a fire on, on smoldering coals, and then you would have heaped coals on top of a very flat lid. And that would have given you heat from both the top and the bottom, creating this sort of convection current inside and slowly cooking meat with a, a little bit of liquid to break down those tougher cuts like a lamb shank or a shoulder, something with a lot of connective tissue. Okay, so you wouldn't braise like a, a piece of filet steak or an expensive oh, cut, would God, you? Oh, God, no. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. we can turn to the chef for that one. Right. It's just, oh, the thing is, it's just a waste because the, the genius of braising is that it, it takes advantage of something that you can't eat in its raw form, which is connective tissue. All that collagen is way too tough to chew through, chew through but filet mignon you can basically eat raw. So, so why cook it? Yeah, but lamb shanks aren't bad meat. They're great meat. I didn't say bad. I said tough cuts with oh. lots of connective tissue. See, I, I, look what happened. I immediately go tough, then it must not be a good cut of meat, but that's not true either. That's exactly right. You know, a peasant cooking, I think, is where it's at. And a, lot of, a lot of times it's in vogue now, right? Curing and pickling. And braising is one of those old peasant techniques. And I actually did this at home earlier so you guys can get uh, right. a look at a really quick way to, to braise at home. So I've got some lamb shanks. You want to always remember season before you start searing. Get some salt and some spice rub on there. Nice and good there. We're going to sear it. Make sure you start at least with the cap so you don't forget that top part. You want to get some good color on there. Go through all of them. We're adding a little bit of extra olive oil there. And then we're going to start with a base of aromatics. I've got some uh, onions and some fennel. Stir that around until they're nice and soft. Then we're going to add in some garlic and parsley, uh, a little more spice mixture. I like a little bit of carrots for some sweetness. Then we add some tomato sauce and red wine. And we put the lamb shanks back in, cover it up, put it in the oven. And this is just going to sit in the oven at 300, a very low temperature, for a couple of hours. When you take it out, oh, give it a turn and see. It's just, I mean, it's already almost falling apart. Uh, this thing, wow, it's, just, it's just slipping out of my tongs, too. Wow. But you can see, I just plucked it with those tongs. And that's what happens when you cook low and slow. This meat just falls apart. You guys, bring it on in so they can start eating. Yeah, yeah exactly. So bring you really made this at home. Yeah, this is, you just saw the video. Oh okay. boy, no pressure, but so, you have yeah, a, no pressure. I mean, I, five diamond chefs sitting here listen, just I, I, Yeah, no pressure at all on that. Uh, so while we dig into this, why don't you talk us through a little bit more of the science? Yeah, so before I was talking about the shank, now that's what we've got right here. The shank is basically the calf muscle of, of any animal. And it's it's like this, it's, it's a, a muscle that gets a lot of use, which means it has a ton of connective tissue. And that's what I've got right here. Connective tissue starts out as collagen, and collagen is a, a triple braided helix. It's very tough. Now, when you raise the heat to about 150 degrees, that collagen, separates into three distinct strands of gelatin. And this is what we get when we braise slowly. We get a really nice mouthfeel and we get really delicious soft meat out of something that would have been way too tough if we had just put it in a hot oven and roasted it. Now I saw that you browned it still before you braised it. Is that important? It's so important because, you know, we're not getting any of that great Maillard reaction, which is what happens when you, you put hot heat on, on muscle tissue. So you want to brown it first and then put it back in the hot sauce, warm okay. sauce. And what's the difference between a braise and a stew? So in it, when you're stewing, you're actually bringing liquid all the way up to the top and you're cubing your meat. You're cutting up a lot of liquid there, or cutting up a lot of meat and to stew it in liquid so that you have a final dish that's very soupy. With a braise, the goal is to reduce the sauce all the way down. Speaking of reducing the sauce, Chef, you could also Beautiful. speak to this. Should you keep the pot covered? I always keep the pot covered. I think there's some debate here, and it depends on how saucy you like your end dish. I put it in the oven totally sealed, and then about halfway through, I crack my lid, you know, a, a good inch or so, to let some of that steam evaporate so that we get a reduced sauce at what the about end. You? I th it depends on what you're using. I think mm -hmm. at the end, if you know, if you want something that wants to go slow and low and it's going in for long hours, we don't always use lids. We cut little pieces of parchment paper and we put mm -hmm. it on top so it slowly nice. lets it evaporate out. But oh, nice. this is, again, it's cooking. Yeah. Right? This is not, we're not curing anything. That's right. So if it's got too much liquid, strain it out, reduce it down. If it doesn't have enough, add a little bit more. I mean, we're not, 
Yeah. So what it's do you beautiful. think, Chef? It's great. Actually, it's very, very good. What do you think? How do you do? I think you do phenomenal. Let me ask you, do you need a sous chef or anyone else? <laughs> I don't want to, right? to come on this side. Oh. <laughs> I want to be his guy. That's how it works. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great compliment. Well done, Dan. Yeah. For more on Dan, go to his website and visit our website for his delicious lamb shanks recipe. Up next, Kristen Smith. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys coming up how to make a fun craft with your kids. And if your little ones put it in their mouth, it's not that big of a deal. I'll tell you why.